student data, privacy is an important issue that all Canyon's district employees are responsible for safeguarding. In this video, we're going to discuss what student data privacy is, including discussions about SIPA, FERPA, and COPPA. We're going to talk about some of the common privacy pitfalls and what you can do to safeguard student data. Then we're going to talk about the Learn platform and how it can support you in making safe decisions about student data in your classroom. First, let's talk about student data. As our world shifts towards technological tools and resources, our classrooms have followed suit with Chromebooks and apps, online platforms, and more of our classroom walls have come down and given our students access to the world. It's our job as educators to ensure that our student data is maintained in a private manner. There are three main federal laws that mandate the certain privacy protections for students, SIPA, FERPA, and COPPA. Let's do a quick overview of each one of them. First, SIPA, the Children's Internet Protection Act. This governs the filtering of internet access, acceptable use, and digital citizenship education. This covers things like internet filters, student email protections, and other hardware safety required for students on the internet. A majority of these requirements are taken care of by the IT department in the Kansas District. SIPA also requires all district educators, including teachers, counselors, and support staff, to be responsible for monitoring students during technology use and educating students about proper online behavior through digital citizenship. In Canyon School District, we meet this requirement through the blending of our digital citizenship in our syllabus, classroom expectations, and being models of digital citizenship in our classroom and around the school. Remember that teaching digital citizenship is the responsibility of every employee in Canyon School District. Now, let's talk about FERPA. FERPA is the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act. This is probably one you're more familiar with. It's the federal legislation that discusses the rights around a student's educational record and the right to have some control over the disclosure of their student's personally identifiable information, or PII. It's designed to protect personal privacy. These FERPA regulations cover paper and computerized electronic educational records directory information, and de-identified data from schools that are generally prohibited from sharing without getting written consent from the parent or guardian. So what is this personally identifiable information, you ask, or PII? Well, personally identifiable information could be the student's name, the name of their parents or another family member, maybe the address of a family or a student's family. Things that can identify a student, such as a social security number, a student number, CSD docs information, or their biometric record. Other indicators or identifiers such as a date of birth, place of birth, mother's maiden name, or any information that could be linked to a specific student that would allow a reasonable person within the school community who doesn't have personal knowledge of the circumstances to identify that student with reasonable certainty. Understanding the nuances of FERPA and ensuring compliance with the law are important steps in protecting student data privacy. Even seemingly small mishandling of information by employees can result in unintended exposure of personal information and infringe on the student's privacy rights. FERPA often gets looked at as the way to prevent student data privacy leaks, but COPPA takes it a bit further and addresses protections for data with students who are under 13. What is COPPA? COPPA is the Children's Online Privacy Protection Rule. COPPA applies to online services, commercial websites, and mobile applications that knowingly or unknowingly collect personal information from individuals who are under 13. The COPPA rule spells out what those people must do to protect the safety of children online and imposes requirements about student data that they're using or collecting, it says they need to have a privacy policy, what should be in that privacy policy, and when they need to get consent from the parent, guardian, or the school sets firm restrictions on marketing to children who are under 13. Personal information under COPPA is very similar to FERPA. Students' name, their CSD docs, a username, a image, a photo, audio recording, telephone number, anything that can be linked back to a student over time. As technology continues to be prevalent in our classrooms, it's important that we as educators understand what tools are safe to use and what tools violate our student privacy protections. Let's talk about some of those common privacy pitfalls. 
The first one is the myriad of ed tech tools, resources, and cool websites that are being marketed out there to teachers. You're getting them in your email saying, hey, come try our new reading platform, our math platform. It's great, you can engage your students and use it. Just upload your class list and your kids can log in. It sounds really great and it might be an awesome tool for you to use in your classroom. Many of these websites can look legitimate, but they can actually be harmful to students. Take their data and then market to them sending them emails or selling it off to other companies. This can be an overwhelming thing as a teacher to understand the privacy policies of all these different tools and which ones you can use in your classroom. Don't worry, we have you covered. We're going to talk a little bit about the Learn platform that we'll be using to help you make safe decisions about student data and the programs that you use within your classroom. The Learn platform is a simple website that lists tons of EdTech tools, websites, and other resources that you can implement in your classroom. We've gone through and looked at these websites and made sure they meet our privacy expectations for our students. If you don't see a tool on here that you use, don't worry. You can even request to have the tool vetted for its privacy status to make sure that it's safe to use in your classroom. The Learn platform is a great tool for you to use. As you're looking for programs and tools out there that you can bring into your classroom to make it more engaging and exciting, we've listed tons of different websites, tools, and apps, and we're adding to them all the time. This is a great place for you to go look and gather information and resources to use within your classroom. If you don't see something that you're interested in using, you can always submit it through the Learn platform or talk to your instructional coach. So I've talked a little bit about the Learn Platform. Let's actually dive in and look at the Learn Platform and see what it can do. Go ahead and get out your computer and we're gonna open up a browser and in the tab, you're going to type learn.canyonsdistrict.org. I'll wait while you go there. Once you get there, you're going to sign in with your CSD Docs email address and account. Make sure you're using your CSD Docs email. It's the only way you're going to be able to access the Learn platform. If this is your first time accessing the Learn platform, you're gonna see a box that asks you to choose your role. You can choose educator or administrator based on what your role is. Then, once you choose that, there'll be a button at the below to choose your organization. Once you've done that, click the blue button to go to your dashboard. I'll wait while you go there. Once you get to the dashboard, you're going to see tons of different things. The first thing on the left-hand side is going to be your tools. You'll see at the top, it says Canyon School District. That's how you know you're in the right place. You'll see the Canyon's District Library. Those are all the apps and resources and websites that we've talked about. The district has looked at and vetted for their privacy status. Don't see one you're looking for? You can go ahead and search it in the top bar. You'll notice that there's several different statuses for different tools. Some of them have privacy policies that prohibit them from being used by students who are under the 13 years of age. So make sure you're looking at those privacy statuses and using them appropriately within your classroom. Maybe a tool you would like to use is not listed here. Not a problem. Go ahead and type the name in the search and when you see it, mouse over and click the request button. Fill out the simple form, letting us know how you'd be using that in your classroom. And we'll take a look and make sure that it meets the privacy expectations of COPPA. As I said before, not only is the Learn platform a great place for you to check out the privacy status of a tool or resource, but it's a great place for you to go when you're looking for a tool to bring into your classroom. Maybe you want a mapping tool to help your students interact with maps in a digital format. Go in to learn and search mapping. See what you can find. This is a lot easier than just Googling something and getting millions of results and having to sort through them. We've curated these to bring more focus for you and implement them in your classroom. You'll notice the different approval statuses. Some say K5, some say 6-8, some over 13. These will help guide you on what tools are appropriate to bring into your classroom. I appreciate your time as we've gone over the Learn platform and why student data privacy is so important. As you move throughout the school year, if you have any questions about the Learn platform, the privacy of a tool, an app, or a website you use, feel free to reach out to your instructional coach 
and they can connect you to the right person to help you out. Remember that digital citizenship is all of our responsibility in Canyon School District. An important part of that is protecting our student data privacy at all costs.